Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to discuss Intel's Alchemist GPUs, specifically performance targets as well as performance of the cards. Because, yeah, performance targets and actual performance are two different things. Because... We've been hearing for quite some time that the cards are going to be targeting RTX 3070 Ti levels of performance. But rather interestingly, some of the earlier rumors that were on this channel had actually been pegging the cards at actually much lower performance levels, around RTX 3060 Ti levels instead. But then my sources actually told me that this was not the case anymore, that that was for very early silicon, and the actual targets were actually instead going to be RTX 3070 Ti. Then, of course, we started to see a benchmark leak, and those benchmarks look pretty impressive. Synthetic, they may be, but again, RTX 3070 Ti levels of performance, and given that was the target, that was sounding to be pretty good, right? Well, yeah, some interesting things have started to emerge recently, and it kicked off actually with not an Apple fan. Now, he said that he's been sitting on this information for around a month to protect his source, but he has actually witnessed a new arc gpu it's been scoring around f the same performance levels as an rx 5700 xt in time spy now going through the thread you'll notice that he is apparently pretty sure that this is the top end arc gpu which has 512 execution units now it is worth noting that he does mention it's a month old this information and given we're going to be talking a lot about some problems regarding software and hardware, well, yeah, it's imperative, of course, to kind of put that caveat out there because stuff can change really quickly with a new revision of silicon, with a new driver. Things can change just radically. Like, if you've been a PC gamer for any length of time, you'll know that a, you know, driver update can make a game suddenly go up 20-30% in performance or more or fix a game that just simply crashes. And this is even for an established GPU, such as RTX you know, 3070 or whatever. You can just have a game that just performs like absolute crap because of whatever reason. NVIDIA releases the driver, and suddenly the frame rates are skipping along like Donald and Goofy down the street. Of course, I'm being slightly silly, but you do get my point. So I decided, based upon this, to reach out to some of my sources, including the original ones who told me 3070 Ti levels of performance performance, and also a couple of additional ones as well, which are, well, let's just say newer sources. Obviously, I don't want to start to give too much specifics on who's been telling me what for obvious reasons. So my original sources told me that the performance targets were still RTX 3070 Ti, and that they believe that these results are true, the 3070 Ti. However, they added that this is not from game results that they've seen. So, for example, Doom Eternal. Instead, these targets are more along the lines of synthetic results. This is something that I heard previously, but they were adding that stipulation and really emphasizing it. So then I decided to speak to some other folks. And there's some interesting things that I've been hearing. So, again... They told me that synthetics, it's doing very well, but actual game benchmarks are doing much worse, around RTX 3060 Ti levels, possibly better in some games. However, I was told it, quote, it crashes a lot, end quote. Now, I wasn't told which games are crashing, and again, when we're talking about time frames, just one driver revision can mean the difference between something crashing and not crashing. However, an interesting pattern started to emerge when a second source told me that DirectX 12 seemed to do better than DirectX 11 pretty consistently. I decided then to just ask a very straight up question. What are the problems with the architecture? Um, because a number of times I've reported, in fact, a video just a couple of days ago, that I've been hearing hardware and software relating issues. And obviously, when we're talking about hardware and software-related issues, like, what is a hardware issue? Is it that there are problems with the memory controller? Is it that, you know, one of the display ports isn't working? You know, it, it, what what is it? You know, is it that if you go, off, you know, to a certain clock speed, does it, does it trigger a new Spanish Inquisition? Like, seriously, what, what are the problems? 
So I basically went back to people and asked them what problems are there specifically in hardware. I was told that crashing seems to be pretty consistent. However, predominantly that seems to be down to software. We'll get into software in a moment. But the big problem with hardware seems to be when you're scaling up beyond a specific clock frequency, the voltage frequency curve just starts to well, not be so much of a curve, and heat starts to become a really big problem. As for the software side of things, predominantly it seems to be some hinky things with the drivers. Again, DirectX 11, as well as older, tends to do worse, like OpenGL as well. But Vulkan and DirectX 12 titles, or benchmarks, seem to do better. Now, this is actually a good sign, because it means that there are... You know, it's not just that the hardware is completely and utterly screwed. It means that there are, you know, things that Intel can do internally. And I do believe that this is a big reason that we've seen it delayed. Again, we were supposed to see Intel's Arc Alchemist launch with TSMC's 6NM process. I leaked that a while ago, and I still stand by it. I do believe that Intel had originally intended this to come out on laptop platforms first... And then later on, it was going to come to PC. So, what are my thoughts, honestly? Like, is Intel completely and utterly, like, done with GPUs? Are they just absolutely just not going to have a prayer? I actually don't think that's the case. Because, interestingly, speaking to multiple people, they've told me that Intel's R&D here for graphics is actually really big. I, I, I won't give numbers, but let's just say that they've got a lot of resources. Second thing is that I'm told that future Alchemist architectures are coming along really well. So this seems to be basically Intel... <laughs> this is going to come up across a bit kind of snotty, but basically Intel just kind of getting their feet wet. In other words, like, yeah, this is the challenge of scaling up and designing something that's let's just say bigger right because an igpu i'm not saying it's not difficult to design but it's not the same thing as designing a desktop or high performance laptop gpu and i do think intel's design teams they are hiring and we'll get more into that in just a moment an absolute crap ton of experienced people um i actually have let's say contacts and they've told me that they know Intel are recruiting a lot of people from both NVIDIA and AMD. And you don't just get all of that talent on board and something not good eventually come of it. So I do think Battle Mage onwards is going to be a lot better. My personal feeling though with Arc is that even if it goes to the original performance targets that I'd said like way back in like, I think it was like late, when was it, late 2020 or whenever the hell it was? I've, like, I've lost track of time at this point. But even if it is that, and it's only, say, 3060 Ti levels, like even if we only have a GPU which are hitting 3060 Ti levels of performance, I am okay with that, providing that the price of the GPUs is cheap and we have a product which is relatively stable. The stability, to be honest, at a decent price, to me, is more important than relative performance because, quite frankly, you know, the cost of some of the high-end GPUs, most people just cannot justify spending, like, 800 bucks, $1,000, $2,000 on a GPU, dude. Like, it's just, it's just too much. Um, so, if Intel put out a product, I'm just pulling a figure out my ass here. But let's just say it's like $300 for a, a decently performing GPU. I am absolutely okay with that. And Intel will sell a crap ton of the products. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely okay with that. And this does bring me to the second uh, piece of news today. And it actually contains perhaps a great indication of what Intel want in the longer term future. So Intel have been expanding its manufacturing capabilities for some time, including fabs and design teams, but a very interesting job description has popped up. And it basically is asking for a senior hardware design engineer. This is specifically around GPUs, and it's a low-power GPU. So this is going to be a location in the United Kingdom. It's uh, Swindon, which is not super far away from London, for those of you who are outside of the UK. And anyway, basically, it 
it wants multiple different things. I'm not going to read all of this out for obvious reasons, but it wants experience in GPU hardware design, complex multi-threaded engine, uh, engines experience, and RTL designer implementation, proven experience. So again, it basically wants someone who has, well, experience to design a GPU, yes, but notice the keywords are low power. Now, obviously, they're not going to be providing exact rundowns in a job description for many obvious reasons as to what the product is actually going to be in the end of it result. However, it's almost certain that this is not going to be for like a desktop, obviously. Instead, we're probably looking at Intel wanting to compete in many of the same areas that, well, AMD are currently. And I do believe that in the longer term future, Intel do want to basically have a massive piece of all of the pies that are on the market. And this is something that AMD have been doing really well. I do believe that it's going to be a very interesting future because the thing is, like, Intel have a crap ton of money behind them in terms of, like, just funds alone, they dwarf even NVIDIA, which is saying something because NVIDIA are not exactly doing poorly, you know, in their financials, but Intel are just, yeah. It's really going to be just trying to get everyone singing from the same hymn sheet, to use the old term. Um, and I will say as well that things slipping are not exactly being where you would expect them is not uncommon. RDNA, for example, I know for a fact that a couple of features just simply were not ready in time for RDNA 1, and they slipped to RDNA 2. With what this all said, um, I'm not going to advocate that you buy an ARC GPU without actually waiting for reviews, of course. And ultimately, Intel still have to prove to me and everyone else that their products are worth it. I am, however, rooting for Intel because I want competition in the marketplace. And given what I'm hearing about the pricing of future AMD GPUs, particularly on the high end, even in the mid-range, to be honest with you, competition is only going to benefit us as customers, unfortunately. It's one of those things where GPUs are becoming horrendously costly to manufacture and yeah my i just i want competition let's just say that with that said thank you very much for checking out the video hopefully you have enjoyed it if you did you know what to do leave a likey on the video and i will see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now